So yeah, if you can just change the slide. There we go. Uh, so <clears throat> this month uh, we're gonna start, we're gonna do uh, something new. Um, we're calling it expert, expert stories. Sorry, easy for me to say. Um, and this is really gonna be where we can have some users um, present a little bit about what they've used idea for and kind of some unique situations um so this is something that definitely if you're, you're if you're interested in presenting uh feel free to reach out to us um and we can kind of uh get you on the schedule for later on this year um so we're pretty excited to have uh bill Sapino with us from scad um, and we're going to be talking about um something that's you know somewhat simple but at the same time can be very difficult when you're working on projects and that's uh, wide flange beams to HSS columns for moment connections. Um, so that will be the discussion today. Uh, just a quick slide about the control panel. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to um, just click on the questions tab there or button, and uh, you can enter your question there. And uh, we'll be doing the Q&A at the end as usual, um, as well as answering during the session. Uh, so with that, just looking at the agenda. Um, so we'll just do a little bit of introduction of Bill and his firm. Um, we'll talk about the project itself that uh, kind of led to these connections, which is a uh, residential project in New England. Um, Andre we'll hand off to Andrea then, and she'll kind of walk you through the modeling and um, analysis and results for these types of connections. And then finally, we'll wrap up with some Q&A. So um, let's talk about SCAD. So um, SCAD Incorporated is specializes in steel connection design um, and review services for steel fabricators throughout the US and Canada. Um, they design a variety of steel connections, um, everything from you know, bolted to welded moment braces, girts, trusses, um, and are basically they're licensed in 14 states here in the US. Um, Bill has been a structural engineer since he graduated cum laude from Northeastern University in 1986. Um, and as we mentioned, he specializes in steel connection design, review, and calculations for steel fabricators. Um, Mr. Spino is now dedicating his considerable expertise to those services um, and working primarily for fabricators. Um, he's utilizing a combination of proprietary software, uh, MathCAD, Risa, as well as Idea Statica now. Um, and with that, we will move on to the talk a little bit about the project. Uh, so actually, Bill, if, if you wanted to just kind of, I gave you a brief introduction. If you wanted to just say anything, feel free to uh, introduce yourself. Yes. Um, so yeah, in 1986, wow, well, you had to bring that up, right? <laughs> so that, you know, so computers there were a lot different than they are now. So back then, of course, we did hand calculations and uh, the way we did graphics back then in our Lotus spreadsheet was we used the symbols for, you know, characters and their symbols. We used the pipe, the underscore, the asterisks to try and create a graphic. So over the years, uh, we've seen it gonna become more sophisticated as computers got more involved into the design of the buildings. Then of course the connections got more uh, sophisticated. And so what I've found is, you know, before the old days, you know, you'd basically take the longest span, the widest tributary area you're done, that's what you do and you repeat it everywhere. And it, we don't have that luxury anymore. And so, over the years, also a, a library of, of Excel spreadsheets, MathCAD, all, all these tools that we have. And um, finally, I, I have got to see idea comes along very impressed. I say, finally, I have something that I can look at. I can feel I can turn it around. I can see where the stresses are. So it was exciting for me to, to uh, have this software and I'm fairly new user. Um, I've I think I've had it for three or four months. And so when it came to this project, I, I mean, I have plenty of uh, other tools as far as library, but the first thing you look at when you see the project, it's okay. You can see that this house in the picture, you can see it has you know cantilevers in both directions. You can see we have different levels. 
And so the first thing you ask yourself is, well, do I have, have I done this before? Do I have a math CAD sheet? Do I have an Excel spreadsheet that fits this? And I had similar things, but you know, at this point I said, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try doing idea static in this because it was complicated enough. I, there was some biaxial bending. You'll see in the connections coming ahead, how there's a simple one. There's the second connection, very, we had different shapes at different elevations. So I would say I, I wanted to use it because I trusted it. I had already verified idea with some typical uh, stuff that I know works through my spreadsheet. So I did a verification as I was learning it, very simple to gain trust in it. And I said, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use idea on it. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, so obviously this is a, a nice residential project uh, in New Hampshire. Uh, looks like it's up in on a mountain or rocks and uh, I like the uh, representation for rocks and shrubs and things. I think it was around 1,200 feet. The ground snow load, just just how New Hampshire is, the ground snow sure. load was 90 psf. Yeah, they had drift loads up in the range of 138 psf. So there was some heavy moments on these. So sure, yeah, especially with the cantilevers, and <laughs> you start getting yes. that snow load on there. Sure, that makes sense. Um, so, I mean, obviously you said, yeah, you decided based on the complexity of this job to, to kind of look at idea and kind of use it for that. Um, so what would you say, how much time would you say you roughly, um, it would have taken without using idea to kind of do the, this project? It's hard to put an, an exact stopwatch on it because to me, I feel there's a lot of intangibles that that is hard to uh, hard to measure. So when you go to these projects, you obviously you look at your library. Now you have to modify it. Okay. Then you, when you modify, we've all been through it. I call it mowing the lawn. You have to make sure you go back and forth. You get all the variables. And so even in a simple adjustment going from bolted to welded, your presentation has to, it has to change. Um, you have to make sure you debug it. And I think we've all, done that where we thought our spreadsheet is perfect and then you find oh he says you you miss this so you miss that and that's what i what i really like about this software is that okay it's that's their job to make sure to work out the bugs it's not my job and it, it gives me the freedom to just really be um you know creative with the connections uh, a lot of times what we'll do we end up kind of sticking with what we already have done right we and, which is a good thing nothing wrong with that but it also limits you in your creativity when you're finding a solution and and especially in these type things where the detailer i mean it, we get the connections that the other software programs can't do i mean that's why they come to us because the detailer he's using his software he can he can you know churn out all these connections but then there's there's some that he can't that they just don't do and i i find that no matter how many you have in your library it's amazing you think okay i've got all the different connections i've organized it is that one connection that comes along nope I, I don't have this one so i i just think the the time that you save is it it's more in just um kind of a practical matter as far as finding it uh you know tweaking it and the other the other thing that you time there's another intangible that you might not think of when you have a graphical view of something the time is also uh, churning through the uh, all this data so the engineer record has to review this and I, i've reviewed calculations for him to see a graphical of it it saves him so much time. He doesn't have, I mean, typically a junior engineer would come in, you know, at, and just crank on it and they can either ch do a thorough job or not. It's really not up to them. It's our connection. We own it, but, but you want to make them feel comfortable nevertheless. And so I think that even the report that idea status gives is very, it's very condensed. It gives extremes and a picture says a thousand words. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, so do you have any, can you give me an approximate idea of how much time you save by using idea? 
I'm going to say hours. I mean, th th it's a lot of time when you, when you, from the beginning to the end. Um, and this is me on a learning curve. I, I mean, I, I don't consider my, myself an expert by any means. Um, so I'm still on the learning curve, but I feel comfortable enough. Well, I'll attack anything. I'm not worried about it. Um, but as I get more efficient with ideas, it's going to be just more and more time hours that, I mean, 10, 20, 30. I mean, uh, basically the software pays for itself very quickly, I find. Yeah, no, especially, yeah. I mean, as far as, especially when you get into some of these projects with, um, you know, everyone, every design t team is trying to push the envelope, it seems. Um, yeah and you know do award-winning designs which everybody loves to do um but you know sometimes the i hope there there aren't many architects on the on the uh webinar but sometimes they need to be re, you know reined in a little bit um mm -hmm. and i think this is a tool to kind of help you know maybe you, you still have to rein them in just for your sanity but you know even when they come up with something crazy uh you're able to kind of solve that I like the challenge. I, I think it's great that it, it, and they know that they they can do what they want. And I think we can meet the challenge before without a sophisticated tool. You're like, oh, I just don't, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's good or not. So now you, you might still come up with that. You might still say, I don't think it's a good idea, but at least you have a tool to check it out. You know, right. And you can, you have something that besides your engineering judgment to back up your, your recommendation um okay good um so why don't we go ahead to the next slide um and i think this is where i'm going to be sure. handing off to andrea uh, and she's going to kind of walk through how to to model these connections yep all right thank you david for that um interview to bill bill uh before jumping into the software um this, the, I mean, these are the connections that I'll model and check in Idea Statica, like from scratch. But uh, can you give us some few details of this, uh, of this designs? And um, for instance, like why you decide to go uh, for the soft type of uh, connection design? And yeah, I mean, if you have some details that you want to share with us about this too, specifically. <laughs> Yep. So connection one, um, so we had a couple of constraints. I've done this type of connection before, wide flange, and I've done it in a bolted version where we actually have the plate going around the uh, mm -hmm. hollow section. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that obviously that's easier for the fabricator, you know, not have to cut a yeah. couple pieces that worry about alignment, things like that. So I work closely with fabricators. So a lot of mm -hmm. the connections that I do, I'm really keeping them in mind. I, I end up thinking, how would I do it? I picture myself in the shop doing it myself. And uh, so you want something that's easy to build as well. Mm -hmm. And so this, but the constraint on this being in a residential area, commercial buildings, you have a little more room to mm -hmm. work. Um, you sure. have you have uh, suspended ceilings, you have curtain walls that are way out a foot and a half away and things. But yeah. residentials, they're tight. So you have to yes. typically work within either five and a half, you know, seven and a quarter, some lumber dimension. Um, mm -hmm. And so we we had to stay tight on this one. So I went with mm -hmm. the continuity plates. I mm -hmm. did. And what was nice about the software is I actually checked it out with no continuity plates. I thought the stresses were a little high in areas and was a little concerned about, you know, maybe some web crippling, things like that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just, to, just to make sure that this, this will follow, you know, a plastic failure, that it would just follow yeah. all the way without buckling and stuff. I, I thought the continuity plates were it. And in the fabricator had no problem doing mm -hmm. these plates. It's 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 okay. a uh, it's a common connection. Right. The other right. one yeah. was mm -hmm. the con connection too. I mean, it look look at it. I mean, <laughs> that there is a there was an issue. I had to do two different things. The continuity plates basically I used on the maximum moment. I believe on the side of that. That was kind mm -hmm. of the main moment frame. The other ones weren't as main. Didn't have as as much. Um, 
uh, moment on them. So I could get away with just a kind of a stiffener a plate without a continuity plate and then yeah. a tube steel. I could, I think that was a small moment. So why, yeah. so why put it on there? And so that's what I like about this is that, you know, you can see it from three sides. And if I did this before, you would take one side at a time, you, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know, you would do it kind of like a vector, you know, add them up yeah. you know, square, square, square root of. And, um, and so, but this was just, it just was so nice to see how it, how it came out. I was very pleased with that. Right. Right. I mean, we select two of them, but I had the, the file from Bill and it's uh, many, many connections like this. So, I mean, um, these are like the simplest ones just to mm-hmm. <laughs> me have some mm-hmm. time to show them how to 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 do this. But um, yeah, I mean, many variations were were uh, well developed from from this. Right. So. All right. Thank you, Bill. So I'll jump into the software right now. And show you how uh, well the strategy of of doing this uh, this connections over here. So let me um, open this file here. All right. So um, well, as as Bill mentioned, he decided for the continuity plate um, continuity plate uh, design here. So for that, well, you need like to cut um, the member, uh, I mean the column, and uh, for this, well, I'll need to have two ended uh, members in Idea Statica. Why? Because the continuous member cannot be cut. So that's why I model two members over here, as you can see here, and then the geometrical type is ended. Then um, the first operation that we will do here is an, a stiffening member operation, okay? So that will help us to locate the middle section of this column. So I'll hit operation, and this is a stiffening member um, operation. So as you can see, the stiffening member operation will help you to add another member without being part uh, of the 1D 1D member system or 1D beam system here. So basically the difference between a uh, regular member and a stiffen- stiffening member is that the stiffening member, you don't need to add a load. So you won't see that listed into the load effects when you're adding um, loads into the connection, right? So that helps you to add another member without being part of this system. So, um, now, if you see transport and view, that is located from the working point. So you can use also angles and offsets and everything. So I use a 90 degrees pitch angle, and this is going to be nine inches length one, and the same for line two. Okay. So now it's matching uh, the bottom side of this top flange because I'll have those two plates over here. So the next operation will be, and well, here I, well, I have already the cross section selected, but if you click on the plus icon, you can also change this um, this profile section, all right? So again, this is a way to add a member within within the model without being part of the members, members uh, list here. And uh, well, the next operation will be to add um, the continuity plates at the top and bottom of this stiffening plate. So always you can use the stiffening plate, but uh, for HSS or I mean for hollow sections, um, the stiffener operation will help you to add a cap plate. So once you add this stiffener and then you assign it to SM1, for instance, then you have this option to activate cap plate. So this works as a cap plate for this SM1. So that will be A36 material, the thickness is uh, 0.5 inches. And here you can add an offset to increase the size of this uh, plate because now it's uh, just in the H of this HSS. So half of an inch here. 
So now you can see how that's increased. Then I'll use uh, the copy option. So you can right click over that operation and then you copy that. And then the remaining part will be in the neg negative value. So it's going to be in the bottom side of this Stephanie member. So automatically you have those two cap leads there. Now, the members, as you can see, keep going through this cap plate. So the next operation will be a cutoff member. So that M1 is going to be cut by um, stiff one, that it's uh, the blade. And so now we have the weld over here. So that's fine. Then I'll copy this cut to cut M2. So I change the member and that will be a stiffener two by a stiffener two, all right? So we are almost there. So now let's add the shear plate. So for that, I'll use a fin plate operation, okay? And then that fin plate operation will be assigned to M3 to the web, okay? And A36 material, the thickness ha uh, 0.5 inches is fine. The gap is 0.5 as well. I'll select top seal so I can, uh, well, I can locate this uh, shear plate from top flange minus 1.5 here, okay? And then uh, three quarter bolt is okay. The spacing between the bolts, uh, three inches is fine. Then I'll add five more bolts from the last one. So if I use the asterisk by five, then you add in total six because you're considering the first one, okay? And finally, uh, I'll add the opening to do the notches on this M3. So let me go into operation. And then to do that, you can use this opening operation. And this will be on M3 web one, okay? And the shape will be notch, okay? This is, um, let me see, what is the size of that notch? Um, um, I have here the details, so that's 1.5. And then you can see the opening over here. And then this is going to be one, okay? And the radius will be three eighths here, all right? Let's put it seven eighths. There you go. So now you can see here this uh, opening, but it is just at the bottom. So you change this location to both. So you have it at the bottom, well, at the top and at the bottom. All right. So uh, we are we are almost there. I mean, the the connection is already model. Now let's jump into the load effects. Okay. So at, uh, well, at this point, I have loads in equilibrium uh, turned off, right? So sometimes you just get the forces for what you need to design this connection. Um, let's run the analysis like, like it, it is now. So let's calculate this. And let's see um, the results of this. All right. So, so far it looks okay. If you see the, the results over here, we have a uh, minus 41 shear force in M3 and 20 keep fit uh, moment in MY. So this is doing, this is doing okay with the, I mean, with the overall model. And then let's review the deformed shape here. So if we go back to, well, if we go to check and then we activate equivalent stresses and then activate the form shape and the mesh. I mean, we are just in the limit for this part of, I mean, for SM1, if you see here in the plates results, okay? We have some plastification on that one. But then oh, reviewing this, the form shape and the stresses um, and the stresses in this model, you're seeing that nothing is happening at the top. So what is the, why is the reason we are modeling this this part, right? So for this, uh, well, my recommendation and well, our recommendation is to um, 
model the the forces or the loads that are also coming coming through this part of the column why because we want to review the continuity of this uh well the continuity blades and if this member will comply with it with with the task of doing the you know the the continuity the continuity of this column right so for that i'll recommend going back into the design and activate loads in equilibrium. That means I'll, I can add forces into the support member that in this case is this M2. If you go to transport and view and click over one of the members, you will see the red square over there, okay? But now you can add loads either in M1 and M2, right? So in this case, I'll artificially, let's say put in equilibrium this model but it is better if you have the real information. I believe um, Bill will comment about this, but uh, for now I'll put it like um, an artificial equilibrium. So when I activate loads in equilibrium, you can see here the unbalance force. So I'll, I'll need to balance the, this forces here. So that will be 20 minus 20, okay? And 20, 21 keeps here. Okay, so this is like the reactions, right? And then I put minus 10 here and minus 10 in the other part of the column. So now you can see that uh, here I am in zero, zero on balance force. So that means we have equilibrium in this node. Always it's better to bring the, the information from your global structure, if you have it, of course. So let's run the analysis and we'll see how now this will work with the full system. You know, we are putting some forces at the top, some forces at the bottom. So now we can we can review um, correctly how it's how it's going to behave in real life. So if we go into the check tab and then equivalent stresses, you will see that we have stresses in both parts and at the top and at the bottom over here, right? Of course, this is just an example. This is me just putting this, um, let me put, uh, well, creating equilibrium in the node with the values I uh, calculate from the input forces, okay? But um, yeah, it's always recommended to have loads in equilibrium if you can do that. All right. Okay, so just just um, if you haven't uh, seen this, I mean in the in the software, let me just show you the difference when you go into loads in Equilibrium on and off. So when you click an on, as you saw, you can input the uh, the the internal forces in the column for instance this is um continuous members so you can see that here i have uh, forces in the bottom and at the top so also only one end uh, end is supported okay so also the load applications load application for all the members including the bearing member is available okay so as i said this is an example that I bring from another software, I mean from uh, results from another software. So I have exactly the reactions uh, to have equilibrium in this node, right? Um, and also you will see the join the statics check. If you have off as the first uh, analysis that I did, you will have um, the support fixed at the end and at the start of the of the member the, again this is a continuous element and then the load application will be available only to the four elements that are here model not in the support but on, in the other members all right so that is the difference between loads in equilibrium on and off if you are wondering how this works okay let me go back to the to the software okay and um let's model the second connection so i did a copy of this connection and then if you go into connection number two when you do a copy you will have the 
second connection over there. The second connection, if you see here, is uh, with a shorter beam. So this is a 16 by 26, so that was changed. But the great thing that using this uh, stiffening member and the stiffeners or the cap plates related to one member is that you just do some adjustments like here, like I'll do 7.5, line one and line two here, okay? And then you almost, you are almost there. Then you click over the fin plate operation and I'll just change the number of bolts, okay? So now it's ready to continue. So, then this model will have two other members in this part and this part. So I have it already modeled here. So I, I'll activate them. So this is a 10 by 26 Y flange and this is an HSS 10 by 6. Okay. So um, the first thing that I want to do is that if you click over here, this is aligned into the node. Okay. So this M5 is supposed to be 1.5 below the top flange of this member, related to this member. So I click over M5. Firstly, I'll align that M5 to M3. So you can see the line plate will be M5 top flange one, and then related plate will be M3 top flange. Now, after that, you can use the offsets as well. So. 1.5 here, okay. Now it is where you want to have that M5. Then M4 will be aligned to this M5 top, top flange. So I'll align it to top flange M, M4 web three, sorry. This is the aligned plate and the related plate will be M5 top flange as you can see here, okay. Now let's do the connections, the first connection from this M4 to the SM1. So if you go to operations, I'll do it just a cut because this will be welded to the SM1. And M4, it's cut by SM1 here, okay? And surface all around to have this, this uh, weld over there. And then the next connection will be M5 to SM1. So for that, I will use a shear plate to have the shear plate from the web to the SM1. So that will be on M5, web one, A36, dimensions from top of steel. So you can see here, minus 1.5, okay. And the transverse spacing between bolts, three inches is fine. Then the last part is adding the top flange and bottom flange for this moment connection. So I'll use also a fin plate operation. And that will be located into M5 top flange. Okay. At this moment, it is in the under the top flange. So let's put it in the right side here. You can change that and that will be welded. All right. So let's change this view to the top view here. And the overlap will be five inches. And I'll keep center line option because in this case it's easier to, to add the top and bottom offsets minus 0.5 inches from the top side of this flange and minus uh, 0.5, the same in the bottom side. So if you see solid view, this is welded to the top flange, okay? So now let's just modify this well here and put it um, just in one side, okay? So now you can see that. And then again, I'll just do a copy and locate this into the bottom flange. So M5, bottom flange, and that will be on the front side. Okay, now you can see this. And then finally, I'll run the analysis of this. I already have the loads here, 
okay and as well i artificially balance this this node this this node over here so let me calculate this So if you go into the check tab and see the equivalent stresses, let's see how this is the form. Uh, this is what uh, Bill was commenting. So in this case, um, because it has load loads here, he just uh, weld this plate to the, to the stop area or weld to the intermediate uh, HSS. But he has some designs where he need he need to put more continuity plates to get that um, to get well to pass that moment that he had there. But but this load it was okay to weld this plate to the HSS directly, right? So um, yeah, I mean this one is is okay. It has different loads, but it is it is working okay. All right, so that's that's all for me. I am wondering if we have some questions, or if we don't have, maybe Bill, you can just uh, comment about the results that you get from here and what were your your thoughts when you were designing this or conclusions, let's say. Yeah, conclusions. Uh, yeah. Wow, you, yeah. you did that fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the way you use some of those operations. They really, it, there, there is there is a, I mean, there's many different ways to do a model and idea. And as you get a little bit better at it, you find tricks and things like that. So yeah. in the learning curve, you get faster and faster. But even without that, just be, having something that you can just be very creative and not limit yourself. Because for instance, that connection right there, that was a nightmare as far as spreadsheets and things like that. Mm -hmm. Not only that, um, I guess you didn't show a report, but what I love about the software is the report. It's very concise and it's easy for the engineer of record to, to look through, check through it quickly. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. And that's good. So those are the things that I really like about it because, because uh, what we do, we have to justify everything that we do. It, it has to be checked, it has to be looked at. And so our presentation really matters. And uh, for them to get a ream of, you know, data and numbers is a, I mean, no, who can make sense of that? And so, this is mm. what I really like. It. Very good job on that. I Thank enjoy you. that. Thank you. And well, just um, going back into the the this model. Uh, well, why modeling the stuff? You had this option, you know, this first option that you commented to us, like you did it directly to the HSS, right? Uh, but then. If you go and check this design and see that you have uh, a lot of stresses over here, so you want to be in the safe side, <laughs> so you model this continuity plates. Well, one of the well the option well this design it's to first verify the continuity, right? And check the continuity plates here, the welds that you have from the top part of the column and to the intermediate part and as well reiterating the recommended analysis is to check this uh, with loads in equilibrium to verify the internal stresses of the column right right yeah yep and then the then I have saved these in a, in a library. I mean, this is this is mm -hmm. what the great thing is. Obviously, we do this all the time. Is that you know the, the copying, and so now yeah. I have these these two here in a library and uh, ready for the next time they come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So always remember that you can use a connection browser to publish this and save this to for uh, future projects. Mm -hmm. All right. So Jen, do we have some some yep. questions yeah we have a few questions um right. so the first one a uh, classic question so can we get a copy of this presentation yes of course uh, the recording will be available on the website 
uh, I, I believe it will be available tomorrow. So everyone yep. will have access to it if, if they missed the part. And then a question for you, Bill. Um, someone was asking, um, I would be interested to hear from Bill on how he has learned how to model connections. The software seems very powerful and I could easily see how you can how you could make a mistake modeling if you weren't well versed in the product. How did you get over this, Bill? I started out with something very simple. Um, I did some tutorials and uh, actually, Jan you know, and Andrea actually helped me uh, just to give me the basics. So then you're on your own. So you take a, a, a simple share connection, something that you know you can verify with your own tools that you have, that you feel comfortable with, that you've developed yourself, or maybe not, maybe another software to compare it to. So that's what I would do, start up very simple, column, beam, something that you could probably even do by hand, you know, checking that. And so I found that working from the node outward, so you kind of start from the middle, you put your basic members and, and try to try to uh, visualize you building it yourself. So how would you build it? First of all, you need to cut it and work your way out. And, and that sort of thing. And yeah, there's a learning curve, but I, I found that there's the, I think it's the view, is it not the, the transparent view is good, but it's mm -hmm. that other view that you can see where your loads are coming in. The, the wireframe, wire, right? Wireframe, looking at a yeah. Y view, clicking on a load. And when you click on a load, you see, you there you go. So you can see where the load is and where there's eccentricity in, you know, in the bolts. And that's where you can really, when you see that view, then you feel comfortable. Okay, I have, I've got the load either going through the face of the column or through the bolts so that there's an eccentricity on the tab and things like that. So I would start out simple. Just do something simple and work your way that way. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, and if anyone else has questions for Bill, uh, please make sure to ask them uh, during this webinar. That could be very interesting. Then actually a couple of questions for you, Andrea. Uh, if you mm -hmm. can go back to the first connection, yeah. uh, there were some CJP welds between the top and the bottom flanges. Uh, so CJP welds between the flanges and the horizontal plates at the HSS. Um, mm -hmm. And graphically, we couldn't see them. Uh, so I'm guessing it's in the solid view. So how do you know whether there is a CJP weld um, yep. in a connection like this? So um, when I am adding an H2H well, you always well you always get selected this um, CJP well. Okay. So graphically in the solid view, we just see the fillet well, but we don't we don't see the CJP well. The way to see that there is something there. Is going into transparent view and you see this line, this yellow line over here. So that's how you can see that there is a CGP well. All right. Awesome. And um, if you actually keep that view, uh, there was mm -hmm. a question also regarding uh, whether the notch that is created in the web uh, for that moment connection, uh, how come or how would you add a uh, cope in the top flange if you actually needed it? So it looks like when you create a notch in the web, the flanges are not impacted. Is that right? Yeah. So this is because you add it into a plate of the member. But then if you want to do an, a notch over this, because that wasn't like automatically added, uh, you can then create another operation and select uh, the top flange and you use either notch or rectangular, uh, let's say, opening. So that's uh, the way to add it over here. All awesome. right. And if you can go, I believe it's in the Azure um, model. Mm -hmm. um, how Second. could you add welds from the inside of the top flange? So um, if you have a fillet weld, how do you decide whether you want the, the weld to be above or below the flange, basically? So in this case, uh, we have two welds here. The, the, the one that it's in the bottom uh, comes from the stiffener operation because this, this stiffener cap plate, because I activated the cap plate here, it is on member SM1 in the positive part. I mean, in this part of the, because this is divided into parts, this stiffening member. 
So um, then the well is over here. So that is the well from the stiffening member to the cap plate. Then I did a cut of M1 member and that's cut by a stiffener one plate. So that well, it is uh, over here. So you can modify it over here, like uh, what side to input or double side or uh, CGP well. Awesome. And this is currently it for the questions in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Does anyone else has anything to ask? Is there anything Just, else you'd like to add, Bill? Uh, you're on mute, Bill, sorry. I was just saying that you guys have been great. Um, the, the support here is just, it's, it's unbelievable. We're getting right back to us and we all know what tech support's like in other software companies. So uh, I just felt that really supported and I wasn't afraid to just start something new. And I mean, what could it hurt? I can always go back to the old way, but more and more I'm finding I'm going to be, you know, shifting to this more and more as time goes on as I build my library. Hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bill. Yeah, it was good. You uh, made it easy. Yeah. And we actually have more questions now. <laughs> <laughs> so the the first one, I believe, it's going to be for that model uh, for the connection between uh, member M4 and SM1. Uh, how did you per perform the flare bevel welds if you have, have the same width of HSS? So between that HSS beam and the uh, SM1 uh, HSS column. This one, right? Yep, uh, Well, for, for this uh, webinar, what I did is just a cut and I am like using the fillet well that we have here. We don't have like an options of, option of doing that bevel well, but you can, let's say, try to simulate that. So you can turn off the welds here. Oh, sorry, that was for the, let me just select this weld. Turn off the welds here and adding a new weld, weld operation from this M4 to SM1. And I mean, that is like the most closest way to do that. Right, Dan, if I am not wrong? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah that's correct, yeah. If, yeah. I, if I could step in a bit, and because yeah. I've dealt with this, and welding is all about effective throat, okay? So even though it might not look like it is, if you know you want at least a quarter of an inch of, of an effective throat, all right, that's so basically idea static, it comes with a quarter inch and then it takes the 0 0.707, reduces it for that that throat. But basically when a flare bevel, it is in is just a shape. I mean, that's all you're saying. It's just the shape. And in the end, the fabricator knows you want so much of an effective weld. And so sometimes I would just like you said, uh, was I would just do four sides. And of course, this one for the for the seminar or for the webinar, you, you mm -hmm. did both sides and you wouldn't do that normally. You're just trying to get it through quickly. But, you know, we might do four welds on each side just on the flat surface. And then mm -hmm. I would probably, I'm not really worried that it's not a flare bevel because in the computer program, it also, is, the stress is based on the effect of throat at, of that point. And so that's, that's how I look at it anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a right. good point. Yeah. Um, then two questions that are actually related is, um, uh, can you check the rotation or deformation in uh, radiance of the connection? And someone else uh, asked, why don't you, why didn't you check the stiffness analysis? So I know that um, you'll need to go into the stiffness analysis and direct to actually check the, um, um, the rotation of the connection. Uh, yeah, so basically you can do a copy of this connection and then, I mean, this is like the the best way to do a copy. Firstly, you check it on the stress-strain analysis, the regular analysis, and then in that copy, 
you change it to a stiffness analysis and then you can run that analysis and you will get the results there this is the analyzed um the analyzed member uh let me just go here and set analyze and then uh you calculate that so you'll get the 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 stiffness analysis um we have a plan to do a webinar about that but uh yeah that's that's how we how we do this mm -hmm. um quick question also while this is actually running um mm -hmm. is there a way to import multiple load cases from analysis software yeah so we have uh several beam beam links that's how we call it and we can import all the load cases and load combinations from different nodes in your global software uh well the, the ones that are in the top of my my head is um sap 2000 etabs stat pro um ram structural system um but then if you don't find a beam link that it's compatible with uh idea statica then you can always use um the import option using Excel. All right. Awesome. Um, and can we model partial welding? So CJP welds, or sorry, PJP welds rather than uh, CJP welds. Um, I'm actually not sure if the question is about CJP welds versus uh, PJP, um, or if it's about just partial welds instead of uh, welding the full length, but. Um, it could be interesting for you if you actually know the, the, the timeline for when the PJP was would be implemented in there. So um, the the last thing we heard is uh, version 23 that will be around April, uh, this April, in April 23. Yeah. Awesome. I agree with this. Um, yeah. And and in case that was actually the, the, the question. Um, if you can show also, well, maybe after you, you look at these uh, results, um, but if you can see how the how to uh, um, provide welds on a, only partial, only so partial welds instead of uh, welding the full length, that could be interesting. But take a look at the, the results first if you want to, to answer the previous yeah. questions. Yeah, let me see what I did here. Uh, yeah, I'll need to, you know, let me see if you see this taking. Maybe it's a uh, low close here. Yeah, I'll need to double check the analysis over here and some inputs that I have for this one. But definitely we can do this a stiffness analysis. Mm -hmm. And then about the units, you can modify the units um, into project. Then you go into units. And here you can change the rotational stiffness unit and then the rotation one as well. So you have these options mm -hmm. here. All right. And yeah, do you, do you mind if you have a uh, weld operation, just show how to oh, yeah, go yeah, from yeah. full weld to partial weld? Yeah, let me... I can use this actually. So if you go, let me, okay. So I'll turn off the welds for this top flange. So I add a new operation that will be a cut. And then if you select this H to surface and uh, as a member plate, M3 top flange, okay. Transfer and B so we can see the H there or H index number four, and then this is M2 web one, right? So then you can change the type of wealth over here. So you can select from partial or intermittent. So you get, you, you give this uh, values over there. All right? Yep, that's right. Um, last question I'm seeing is, is there a plan in the future to add Reset 3D to the beam links for loading? and um, Currently, we you can import a SAF file format from RISA, but it does not bring over the loads, and so that's the current way of thinking with RISA. We we do have that link, I believe, since beginning of 2022, uh, maybe a, a bit before that. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So uh, just um, the final slide that I have for you guys is that uh, these are the coming webinars. I mean, we'll have one per month, but um, this these are the topics that we are planning for for those. So you'll get either an email or, well, in our website, we'll be there, all right? Okay, well, right. awesome. yep, you, you, you're there, David. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so thanks for everyone to uh, for attending today. Um, and hopefully we'll see you at the, some seminar, yeah, some other webinars later this year. Uh, I'd just like to thank Bill for, for his efforts mm -hmm. in uh, helping us with this webinar. I think uh, as the first guinea pig for our expert series, um, <laughs> it went pretty well. So. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Well, all right, everyone, have a good day. Um, and we will be shutting it down. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you, Will. Bye-bye.